Hey everyone, Ronan here. I just want to say, this month so far has been crazy. It's been a lot of good videos. I really hope you guys are enjoying the new editing style and all of the extra work that I've been putting into the videos with the longer run times and such. But anyway, without any further ado, let's get in to part 5. Alright, we're picking back up with Ash, Alexa, and Grant as they enter the Tower of Mastery. Ash is super pumped. Ash immediately enters the facility looking for the Shalor gym leader, announcing his presence and what he is there for. Two people look at him completely and totally dumbfounded. Who is this young boy and why is he here? An older man and a young girl. Ash sees them and as they're the only people in the tower at this current time, they immediately get his attention. Ash runs over to the old man and announces who he is again, urgently insisting that he get a gym battle from this person without even knowing who they are. The old man says, wait, wait, slow down, son. I don't know who you think I am, but I'm not the gym leader of Shalor City. Ash says, really? I thought, you know, with you being old and all, that it would be you. And then he hears from behind him. <clears throat> Ash turns and there's a young girl girl on rollerblades. She goes, I'm the leader of the gym. My name's Karina. How can I help you? Ash says, well, I'm here to challenge for a gym badge, so I was hoping to get a battle today. Karina tells Ash, oh, a gym battle, eh? Well, you got a lot of spirit. Let me ask you, how many badges do you have? Ash smugly says one. Karina says, one, huh? Most people that reach me have about three or four, but I think I might be able to make an exception. Ash says, really? Well, that's great. When can we have it? Karina says, well, how about this? I was just going over some things with my grandfather about his responsibilities and how they will soon be passed to me. Why don't we test just how powerful you are? Ash says, what do you mean? She goes, how about a special battle? A battle with Mega Evolution. Karina tells Ash that her grandfather is the keeper of Mega Evolution, and in the Tower of Mastery, he is the one responsible for maintaining the tower. She says, her grandfather is a direct descendant of the first person who ever used Mega Evolution in the Kalos region. Ash says, what is Mega Evolution? Alexa says, Ash, you live in the Kalos region, and you don't know what it Mega Evolution is? He goes, no, I've never really been exposed to it. Grant then interrupts and says, Ash, Mega Evolution is the process of when a trainer and their Pokemon have a strong bond, and when they have a strong bond, they're are able to unlock a new level of power, allowing the Pokemon to reach a new form. Ash, not really understanding the concept, asks, really? So how can I get all my Pokemon to Mega Evolve? Karina just yells at Ash, not all Pokemon can Mega Evolve. Only certain ones can. Ash says, really? Well, that sucks. So, how do I get my Pokemon to Mega Evolve? Grant then steps in and says, Ash, first we have to identify which one of your Pokemon can Mega Evolve. And then Grant turns to Karina and asks, so what is this responsibility you were talking about, Karina? Karina then says, well, my grandfather and I were talking about passing on the responsibility of the Keeper of the Tower of Mastery to me. Grant says, really? That's interesting. So, what would have to happen for you to assume the responsibilities? Karina says, well, actually, that's simple. I would have to beat my grandfather father in a battle with Mega Evolution and prove that I am ready to inherit his responsibility and title as Keeper of the Mega Evolution. Grant says that was actually something I would really be interested in seeing. Alexa seconds this, saying she would love to report on this, so she asks if the two would actually be willing to do that while she records it. After some discussion, Karina and their grandfather actually thinks that this could be to their benefit. There has never been a televised succession ceremony before, so they agree to these terms. All the while, Ash is getting more antsy. He didn't want to come here to watch a battle. He wanted to come here to be part of the battle. And he interjects saying, I hate to interrupt, but can we at least have our gym battle first? Grant, a little agitated with Ash, knocks him on the head saying, you need to wait your turn. Karina steps in. You know what? You're right. Why don't you have a battle, Ash? Ash gets super excited. All right, I'll have a battle with you. Karina says, no, not with me, with my grandfather. Karina's grandfather just rolls her eyes. Little does Ash know is that when challengers show up just like him to where they're impatient, she has them challenge her grandfather in an effort to offer them some humility. But he is on board with this because he does like to test new trainers himself. So he says, how about it, Ash? Would you like a chance to challenge the current keeper of the Mega Evolution secrets? Ash, after thinking about this, says, you know what? I would because it'll give me a chance to warm up for you, Karina. He says, where do we have the battle? Karina's grandfather says, we'll do it right here. Alexa says this will be perfect. While you two are battling, it'll give me time to get set up so I can record your guys' battle later on. Alexa says, Ash, try not to get knocked out too easily, huh? I need some time to prepare. Ash just glares at her in disapproval. So the two trainers take their position. Karina's grandfather leads with his hair across. Ash uses the Pokedex to get some data on hair across, and once he figures out that it's a bug fighting type, he decides to take a risk and he goes with his first Pokemon, Absol. Karina's grandfather peeks up. Oh, an Absol, huh? Interesting. Ash says, yep, it was 
was my first Pokemon, and I know it's at a disadvantage, but that's alright though. We don't back away from a challenge, and Absol nods in approval. Karina's grandfather gives Ash the first move, so Ash says, alright then, don't worry, we won't disappoint, and he orders Absol to rush in with a quick attack. Karina's grandfather just orders his Heracross to stand there and to take the move, so using his giant horn, Heracross intercepts the move and then counters with the Mega Horn, knocking Absol back and into the ground extremely hard. This throws Ash off. He wasn't expecting to that type of retaliation from a move. Absol is having trouble standing. That move really caused a lot of damage. Ash turns to Absol and asks if it can still battle, and Absol nods. So Ash orders Absol to fire a Razor Wind. The Razor Wind comes in, but again, Heracross uses its horn to defend, intercepting the majority of the damage, minimizing the actual damage to itself. Karina's grandfather tells Ash that he's going to have to be a little bit more tactful than that. Just attacking head on will not get him anywhere in this type of battle. So Ash does what he can with Absol and tries to use its speed to his advantage to try and outmaneuver over Heracross, but it's to little avail. Heracross is able to take every blow, and he just deals it back at him. The battle drags on for far longer than it should have, and Absol is starting to tire. Its endurance is nowhere near this Heracross's. Then, Karina's grandfather asks Ash, Hey, do you want to see something? Ash, thinking to himself, Great, what other surprises does he have in store for me? Just then, he notices a glowing on the wrist of Karina's grandfather as he touches a stone. Then the glowing transfers over to Heracross, and Heracross is enveloped in a giant egg shape of energy. After the energy dissipates, the Pokemon that was there is completely different. It looks somewhat like Heracross, but it's grown in size and in bulk. Ash looks at it and he knows immediately that this thing could be a problem. He orders Absol to rush in with the quick attack, and instead of trying to defend this time, Karina's grandfather just orders Heracross to take it, and he does. And once he's locked Absol inside of his horns, Karina's grandfather orders a close combat that knocks Absol out, ending the battle. Ash is speechless. He knew that Absol was at a type of disadvantage, but he didn't think it would be this one-sided. And this whole Mega Evolution thing really showed him how outclassed he is. Karina says, See Ash, I told you, you wouldn't have that good of a time, but now are you willing to wait for me and my grandfather to have our battle so he can pass on the responsibilities of the Mega Evolution Keeper to me? Ash just quietly nods as he's thinking about the battle that he just had and how he could potentially obtain Mega Evolution. Just then Alexa approaches him. She says, I'm all ready and set up to record the battle. She says, Ash, you lasted just barely long enough for me to get everything set up. Good job. This just irks Ash a little bit more as he thinks about his battle. Alexa asks Karina and her grandfather if they're ready to get started, and they do. Karina and her grandfather take their positions now. Ash is deeply involved in this battle. He wants to see exactly what a Mega Evolution can do, because he barely even scratched the surface with his battle with Heracross. Karina's grandfather sends back in Heracross. Then, Karina pulls out a Pokeball, and she sends in her own Pokemon. This Pokemon is identified as Lucario. This is Karina's ace Pokemon. Ash uses his Pokedex to get some information on the Pokemon, learning that it can see Aura. Ash thinks, this is interesting, they're both fighting types but their duality with Steel and Bug. He's quite curious to how this is going to play out. The two trainers waste no time. They immediately go for a Mega Evolution. Mega Heracross and Mega Lucario. The battle gets underway, and it is truly a test of speed and power versus endurance and defense. Heracross is just taking the attacks from Mega Lucario, but Mega Lucario is attacking at a blinding speed. Ash can barely see what's going on. This battle draws out till both Pokemon are exhausted, but in the end, Karina is able to take down her grandfather and his Heracross, proving that she is ready to take on the mantle of the Keepers of Mega Evolution. With that, the ceremony has concluded. Ash got to see what a Mega Evolution is truly capable of, and Karina's Lucario, it kind of scares him a little bit. He doesn't think any of his Pokemon has what it takes to keep up with that thing, and if it were to Mega Evolve during a battle, he would definitely lose. This is kind of shaking him a little bit, but Gran, on the other hand, is itching at a chance to potentially battle this Mega Evolution, so he issues a challenge to her, just wanting to test his strength against against hers, gym leader to gym leader, considering he doesn't have any Megas. Karina is more than happy to take this challenge, and she tells them that she would like to do the next challenge at the gym. So with that, they head out from the Tower of Mastery back to the gym in Shalor City. Ash is the last one out, and as he goes to leave, Karina's grandfather stops him. Ash, after you have your gym battle, no matter the outcome, I need you to come see me. Ash, curious about this, says, what is it about? And he says, don't worry, it'll be to your benefit, but I need you to come see me after the battle. So with that, Ash heads out. Over at the gym, the battle with Grant and Karina has already started started and is about halfway through when Ash arrives. Grant has chosen to go with his Tyrant. Karina was interested as the coloration of this Tyrant seemed far different than any Tyrant she had ever seen.
seen before. Even though Tyron is strong, it can't hold a candle to Mega Lucario, and it eventually falls after a couple of Metal Claws. The power that Mega Lucario has is really starting to get to him. Karina then turns to Ash and asks if he's ready for a battle. Ash says, uh, yeah, sure. Karina comments, oh, you're not the same confident kid that you were when you got to the Tower of Mastery. Ash just ignores her. So how many Pokemon are we going to use? One, two, three? Karina asks, well, how many do you have? Ash says, well, I have four. Karina says, okay, so how about this? A four on four. Ash says, a four on four? Karina says, yeah, why not? I mean, after all, you wanted to battle a gym leader, right? Ash looks at Grant. Can she really do that? Grant says, yeah, the gym leader can lay out the terms of the challenge, whatever they decide. Karina wants a four on four. You have to agree to it. Ash tells Karina he would like to take that challenge, but his Absol has already battled today, and it took a lot of damage from her grandfather's Heracross. Karina, kind of forgetting about that battle, says, you know what? You're right. Well, I guess we'll just have to make it a three on three. Are you ready? Ash was secretly kind of hoping to avoid a battle with her right now because he's not confident in himself after watching Mega Lucario and his performance. But he ultimately agrees and the battle gets underway. Karina sends out her first Pokemon, Machoke. Ash is thinking to himself, well, at least it's not Mega Lucario. Maybe I'll have a chance to push through. After using the Pokedex to get some data on Machoke, Ash decides to go with Craniados. Craniados is off color, catches Karina's attention as it too seems to be a very special Pokemon. Not a Mega Evolution, but Karina definitely wants to battle it. The battle between these two gets started and overall, Machoke has the advantage in type and experience, and Ash is having a hard time keeping up. So much so that one brick break puts Craniados down, and Ash doesn't understand why. He shouldn't have taken that much damage from a single brick break. But Ash can't think about that now, so he recalls Craniados and he decides to send in his next Pokemon, Clauncher. This battle is a little bit more even, as Clauncher's experience and battle prowess is a lot higher than Ash's other Pokemon, and it's able to go toe to toe with Machoke, and eventually Machoke gets taken out by a water pulse. This does kind of restore Ash's confidence a little bit. So he starts to perk up, and even to the point to where he compliments Clauncher. This brings out Clauncher's true power, because Clauncher is the type of Pokemon that loves adoration from its trainer after being neglected for so long. Karina decides to send in her next Pokemon, a Metatite, and the battle gets underway. Metatite tries to use its psychic typing to its advantage, but overall, Ash is still able to put up a decent fight against it. In the end, even though Clauncher ends up taking a decent amount of damage, it is able to put down Metatite with the Crab Hammer, bringing Ash to the lead of the battle. Karina recalls Metatite and actually compliments Ash. She actually didn't think that he would be able to handle those two Pokemon, but his real challenge begins here, and Ash gulps as she sends in Lucario. This is the one Pokemon that Ash was afraid of the entire time, and all that confidence that he had slowly started to get back, it's dwindled away at this point. So, the battle gets started, and Lucario, without even Mega Evolving, hits Clauncher with a Force Palm, sending it into a wall, knocking it out. He didn't waste any effort in doing so. This once again knocks home the fact that Lucario is a very strong Pokemon. Ash recalls Clauncher and thanks it for its battle. Now, he only has one Pokemon left. He pulls out the Pokeball and looks at it. Ash knows this battle is going to be a struggle because Yanma still doesn't listen to him fully, but he figures he may have a chance if Yanma's super aggressive battle style can hold off Lucario long enough for it to knock it out. So, he sends it in, and as soon as it pops out of the ball, without even a command, it fires a sonic boom at Lucario. But Lucario could see this coming just by the motion of the aura from Yanma, and he put up a defense before it would even reach it. Karina tells Ash that she's seen better trained Pokemon, but she's quite curious to this Pokemon too, as the coloring on it seems a little bit off. Ash tells her, yeah, this Pokemon is super aggressive and I haven't had it for very long, and it has been a bit of trouble, but I'm still not going to let that stop us. So he orders Yanma to rush in with a sonic boom, but again, Lucario is able to see the aura around the move and puts up a defense blocking it. This strategy just continues, with Ash ordering Yama to fire multiple attacks, majority sonic boom, and Lucario just defending it. Karina is actually starting to get tired of this. She knows that Ash doesn't have a chance, so she wants to put the pressure on. She initiates the Mega Evolution, evolving Lucario into Mega Lucario. The battle immediately went from one-sided to no chance, when Mega Lucario comes rushing in and takes out Yama, putting it down. Ash just stands there in stunned silence. He never had a chance from the beginning, and all he was getting throughout the battle was false hope. The whole concept of Mega Evolution and the power that it provides to your Pokemon is something that he's going to have to master. This is only the second gym leader he's faced. What if other gym leaders have access to this? Will he even be able to beat them? Would he even stand a chance against them? All these questions are running through his head when Karina approaches him. Ash, that was a good battle. Even though you didn't have Mega Evolution and you really didn't stand
stand a chance at this point, you still put up a good fight. You do have some decent Pokemon. I would say though, you do have to get a lot stronger if you hope to beat me. Ash then asks Karina, well then how would I do that? Karina says, well, training with your Pokemon is a good place to start. Ash says, but how do I get Mega Evolution? Karina just laughs. Ash, just because you have Mega Evolution wouldn't make you a strong trainer. Your Pokemon have to have a good base first. They have to have a good stability to them before you want to consider Mega Evolving them. It took Lucario years of training before it was ready to even Mega Evolve. But Ash isn't hearing this. He is only concerned right now is getting Mega Evolution. Karina tells Ash, listen, not all Pokemon can Mega Evolve. You gotta make sure you have the right Pokemon that would be willing to Mega Evolve. That's the first step. The next step is conditioning. If you don't do what you can to condition your Pokemon, then when they Mega Evolve, you could hurt them. You're putting a lot of strain on their body by flooding them with energy. That's why these forms aren't permanent. They're only temporary boosts of power that last the duration of the battle. Ash hears this, but he's not really listening. He just says, well listen, thanks for the battle, but your grandfather told me to come see him after the battle. So that's what I'm going to go do now. Hopefully he can offer me more words of wisdom than you. I mean, after all, he is older. Then Ash walks off, leaving Grant and Alexa to wonder what that was all about. Ash gets back to the Tower of Mastery and he goes to see Karina's grandfather. Karina's grandfather doesn't even think twice. So you lost, eh? Ash says, how'd you know? Karina's grandfather, being a man of experience, said, one can tell when you're going into a battle, when you've had as many as I have, you had the look of loss before you had even gotten in the battle. Ash says, what do you mean? He said, the moment you realize the power of Mega Evolution, you knew you couldn't win. He said, you knew you were going to lose from the beginning, but you didn't want to admit it to yourself. Ash says, so what if I am? He says, your next question is going to be, how do you obtain Mega Evolution? Ash gets quiet. Karina's grandfather just says, see, I know you better than you think. Anybody who first experienced Mega Evolution has the same questions. And the answer isn't always so simple. Ash says, what do you mean? Karina's grandfather says, well, there's certain tools, certain objects you need in order to start a mega evolution. It's not just the Pokemon, it's the bond and items that facilitate it. Like this, Karina's grandfather holds out a ring. He says, this is a mega evolution ring. Ash just looks at it. A mega evolution ring, he says. Karina's grandfather says, yes, and you also need a keystone inside of it, like this one that I have here. These are the ones that I use to mega evolve my hair across. Ash says, so if I get one of those, then I can mega evolve my Pokemon? Karina's grandfather says, well, that's one step, but it's not the complete process. You also have to find a specific stone that resonates with your Pokemon. If your Pokemon doesn't have that stone, then the transformation can't be initiated, but it also requires a strong bond between the trainer and the Pokemon as well. If that bond does not exist, then the Pokemon will not Mega Evolve. Ash says, so what you're telling me is, it's hopeless. Karina's grandfather says, no, it's not hopeless. There is a chance for you to get Mega Evolution as well, but it's something you have to discover. It's not something that can just be given. Karina's his grandfather then says here and he throws the keystone at ash ash says but this is yours karina's grandfather says it was mine i actually don't need it anymore i've passed on the responsibilities of the keeper of mega evolution to karina so i will no longer need the ability to mega ball my hair across he looks at his hair across and says my battling days are behind me i am to retire now as i would really just like to enjoy life and watch my granddaughter as she flourishes into the keeper that i know she could be ash then asks about the bracelet karina's grandfather then states i would give you the bracelet but that's not for me to give. I can help you start your journey, but I can't give you the entire journey. It's going to be up to you and your responsibility to discover the tools and the processes needed to Mega Evolve. I've given you the first key. Now you must find the rest. And with that, Karina's grandfather turns and he walks up to a, a room at the top of the Tower of Mastery and closes the door, leaving Ash to sit there and contemplate what just happened. Later that night at the Pokemon Center, Ash is staring at the keystone. Alexa and Grant looking at him, concerned. Grant eventually asks Ash what's wrong. Ash just says, it's so frustrating that he couldn't get Mega Evolution like Karina. She has it, and he doesn't, and her grandfather is unwilling to help him. Grant just laughs. Ash, why are you so obsessed with Mega Evolution? You never knew about it before today, and you were doing just fine. But now, all of a sudden, because you discovered a new form of power, you're obsessed with it? Grant says, that's not the way to go. Ash says, what do you mean? Grant says, not every Pokemon can Mega Evolve. That was made painfully clear to us today. Grant then says, instead of focusing on Mega Evolution, why don't you just focus in on making your own Pokemon stronger? After all, it is possible that those Pokemon could be the Mega Evolution if they had the proper training. Ash then thinks about this, and he thinks, you know what, Grant is right. If I can beat a Mega Evolution without a Mega Evolution, think how strong that Pokemon would become when it gained Mega Evolution. Ash then asks Grant and Alexa if they'd be willing to train with them. Grant says, that's not quite the message I was trying to get across, but I suppose you're 
you're on the right track. And yes, I will be willing to train with you. Alexa says, I mean, I'll do whatever training I can, but I'm not much of a trainer. Although Neuvern is pretty strong. So that's what they do. Ash ultimately decides not to stay in Shallow City because he wants to come back and challenge Karina when he's become stronger. So they move on to the site of their next badge. Eventually, after around two weeks of traveling and training, they reach Cormine City. This is the site of the next badge of the Kalos region. Ash is super excited. He hasn't caught any new Pokemon, but he has been working with the Pokemon that he currently has. Absol has gotten a lot stronger and a lot faster. And in order to help him with his fighting type weakness, Ash has actually been working with it in Neuvern to teach Absol Aerial Ace. And he's pretty much mastered the move now. So that's a big win in Ash's. Next, Ash has been working with Craniados and has picked up a new move too, Zen Headbutt. And he figured that this would be a good type of move to learn. And there was also something that he learned from Nurse Joy in the Pokemon Center in Shallow City after having Craniados looked at because he was curious to why the Brick Break took it out so quickly. And what Nurse Joy found out after examining Craniados was astounding. It seemed to have remnants of the dark typing, which normal members of its species don't have. Craniados has only ever been documented as a rock type. So Ash has been working on a defense, Craniados, for its four times weakness to the fighting type. Then we have Clauncher. Clauncher's growth has been slow because it previously belonged to another trainer. That's one of the things about it. It does learn new ways to move, but training it can be rather difficult at times because it's kind of stuck in its ways. But it still likes being with Ash because Ash does give its praise for its power. And then last, we have Yanma. Yanma has actually started to come around and Ash is rather enjoying it. The Pokemon is super powerful, but it is super aggressive, much like the rest of the Pokemon on Ash's team. It still doesn't hesitate to fire off a Sonic Boom or two whenever it gets the chance, not because it wants to hurt anybody, but because he thinks it's funny when people react to it. He seems to get amusement out of it. But Ash is really learning a lot from this bug Pokemon, and not only that, but he's getting to experience the fairy typing, which seems to be quite rare in the Kalos region. The only problem that Ash is still having with Yama is when it gets flustered, then it starts to go back into the point to where it doesn't really want to listen to Ash. That happened right before they got into the city, because Ash was working with it to learn a new move, Air Slash, and it's having difficulty mastering this technique. And because it had that difficulty, it kind of threw a fit and started firing sonic booms, almost hitting Alexa and Helioptile in the process. But Ash is eager to challenge his next gym, so he heads immediately for the Kermine City gym, and he meets Ramos. Ramos is a grass type specialist, and Ash's first question to him is, do you have a mega evolution? And Ramos, looking at Ash, just laughs at his enthusiasm. No, I'm sorry, young trainer. I don't have a mega evolution. Ash, kind of disappointed by this because he was really hoping to get to see a new one, says, well, you are the gym leader, right? Ramos says, yes, I am the gym leader, Ash. What can I do for you? Ash says, well, I would like to challenge your gym for a gym badge. Ramos happily accepts this challenge, and they head inside the gym, where they are greeted with a garden and a giant tree on the indoors. Ash is amazed by his sight, and he asks Ramos if Ramos explains that the gym also doubles as a garden. A lot of wild grass and bug type live here, and I'm merely its keeper. So, Ash, should we get to the battle? Ash excitedly says, yes, you got it, and both trainers take their positions. Ramos then decides to lead with his Weeping Bell. After pulling out his Pokedex to get some info on Weeping Bell, Ash feels like the right move is to send in Yama, and the battle starts. Yama is super fast, and Weeping Bell has a lot of trouble keeping up. Ramos tries to counteract Yama's airborne speed with Razor Leaf, but Yama just dodges. Then, Ash orders a Sonic Boom that connects with Weeping Bell, stunning it in the process. Ash sees an opportunity for this, and then he orders an Air Slash, but unfortunately because he hasn't perfected the Air Slash with Yama yet, it misses, and Ramos can see that this move is incomplete. He then orders Weeping Bell to grab Yanma as it comes in with a vine whip, slamming it into the ground. This is the point where Yanma starts to get flustered like before, and it starts rapidly firing sonic booms throughout the gym. Ash calls out to Yanma, trying to stop it, but it won't listen, and it just repeatedly fires sonic booms. Unfortunately, Weeping Bell ends up getting caught in the crosshairs of one of these, and it takes it out. Ash, having no choice, decides to recall Yanma for right now, even though it's declared the winner of the battle. Ramos is kind of concerned about this. He asks Ash what the deal was. Ash tells him that his Yama gets upset when it hasn't mastered something, and he tends to throw a little bit of a fit. Ramos tells him, you might want to watch that, because it could become dangerous someday. Ash doesn't really acknowledge what was just said and tries to ignore it. Then he asks Ramos if he can send in his second Pokemon so they can get the battle underway. Ramos says, sure, no problem, Ash, and he decides to send in his next Pokemon, Sunflora. After using the Pokedex to learn 
the stone floor is just a pure grass type, Ash figures he knows what his next move is. So he decides to send in his next Pokemon and he goes with Craniados. This catches Ramos off guard. Why would Ash choose a rock type to battle a grass type? And not only that, but this Pokemon has a weird discoloration just like his last one. Ramos' interest is definitely peaked, but the battle must go on. The battle between Craniados and Sunflora is a little bit more even. Craniados has come to respect Ash and therefore obeys every command that he has. And Ash is able to wrap that battle up really quick because of Zen Headbutt and the massive damage that it can put out. Bringing Ash to his second victory. Ramos commends on Ash on his victory as he, Ramos only has one Pokemon left and Ash still technically has three. So he sends in his last Pokemon, Go-Goat. Ash decides to leave in Craniados here and the battle gets underway. The two Pokemon just have a headbutting contest. Literally, that's what it comes down to. They fire headbutt and after headbutt towards each other with not really gaining any way. But Go-Goat does eventually get the upper hand when it fires a Razor Leaf at Craniados at point blank range after one of the headbutts had failed. This takes Craniodos down. It doesn't fluster Ash as he still has two Pokemon, so he decides to send back in Yanma. Yanma has calmed down a little bit, but it still seems agitated. Ash is able to give it commands though, and over the course of the battle, it is able to cause some damage to Go-Goat, but unfortunately, a headbutt puts it down once it gets flustered again when Ash calls for an air slash that fails. So now Ash is down to his final Pokemon, and he makes the choice to send in Absol. Ash recognizes that Ramos's Go-Goat is strong, but but he can tell that it's winded. The goat Pokemon is breathing kind of hard, so Ash wants to end this quick. He orders a quick attack, and Absol is able to get in with super speed, causing damage. The battle at this point pretty much goes on like this, Ash testing Go-Goat's endurance, and you can see that it's slowly dwindling away. And everything comes to a head when Ramos orders his own Zen Headbutt, and Ash counters with an Aerial Ace. Once the Aerial Ace connects, it hits with enough force to knock out Go-Goat. This earns Ash his second badge of the Kalos region, the Plant Badge. Ash sells celebrates with his victory over Ramos, and Ramos commends him on having some very powerful Pokemon. He does reiterate the fact though that he might want to watch Yanma. He's got to work with it a little bit more, so that way Ash and everybody else around him won't be in harm's way whenever it decides to randomly fire off a sonic boom. With that, Ash elects- The next morning, they all decide that they're going to head out to the site of the next gym badge in Lumio City. With that, the trio decides that they're going to head down Route 13. It takes a little while, but they do eventually make it to Route 13. And, and after traveling for about a week, they come to a vast desert, and off in the distance they spot a facility. Grant says, that's the Kalos power plant. It controls all of the power for the Kalos region, and mostly for Lumio City. Ash says, that's amazing. He asks if they can go see. Maybe he can find some Pokemon around it. Grant says, you know what? Why don't we go check it out? Maybe they're offering tours for people that are traveling. So the group head out to the power plant. Along the way, they notice something strange in the desert. A lot of the Pokemon seem to be fairly aggressive to any humans in the area. They don't understand why. Being attacked by the Pokemon like the likes of wild Diglets, wild Dug Trios, wild trap itches. But there's one Pokemon in particular that takes a notice to Ash and attacks him super aggressively. Slugma, the lava Pokemon. Its body is made of magma. If it doesn't keep moving, its body will cool and harden. Ash looks at the fire type and it is staring him down. It doesn't even acknowledge Alexa or Grant. Ash doesn't understand why it has such hostility, but if it wants to battle, he's not going to turn it away. So he sends in Absol. Ash orders Absol to use an aerial ace and Slugma counters with a flamethrower. For a Pokemon that's so small, this flamethrower seems to be abundantly powerful. This excites Ash a little bit more, and he's thinking that he might want to add this Slugma to his team. So, he orders Absol to rush in with a quick attack so it can outspeed the flamethrower, and it works. It manages to get in, causing damage to the Slugma. Once Absol retreats to a safe distance, waiting on its next command, Ash notices something. The Slugma is down. It was knocked out by the quick attack. He thinks, oh, this is my chance, so he throws a Pokeball at it, and after one, two, Three, Slugma is added to his decks and now has five Pokemon. Ash celebrates in victory, thinking that was the easiest catch he's ever had. Grant then says, hold on, Ash. There was something wrong with that. Ash says, what do you mean? He says, a Slugma with that powerful of a flamethrower shouldn't have been that easy to knock out with just a simple quick attack. It might be injured. So Ash lets it out of its ball. And sure enough, the Slugma is still unconscious and it is breathing very heavily. This instantly worries Ash. Grant says, I thought so. We have to figure out exactly what's going on here and we have to get this thing medical attention right now. Unfortunately for them, the closest place is the power plant. So they head off in that direction, hoping there's someone there that can help them with And that's all we have for part five of what if Ash was born in Kalos. What do you guys think about this part? 
part. How do you guys feel about the succession ceremony between Karina and her grandfather? And how do you feel about Ash's battle with Karina and his new obsession with Mega Evolution? And how do you guys feel about Ash's newest capture in Slugma? Let me know in the comments down below. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like, as it really helps the video get to a larger audience. And if you haven't already, please subscribe, as it really helps the channel grow, and I'm looking to try and get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And also, if you want to discuss Pokemon What If content with other people with the same mindset as us, don't forget to go to the Discord in the link below. And if you want surprise behind the scene access to stuff that I'm working on in real time, don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I post hints there about current What Ifs that I'm working on and current projects. So it's a good place to get behind the scenes stuff. And lastly, if you want to help get more content out, please don't forget to visit the Patreon in the link below. Any little bit helps to bring you guys the greatest What If content that I possibly could. Anyway, I'm Ronan Charizard, and I'll see you in the next video.